Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey. So, uh, level to be a node. It's, uh, it's kind of cool. Um, it's been happening a lot lately. Um, seeing a lot of talks um, from like the node core community and things like that, talking about node bases. Um, <clears throat> LevelDB is great at storing data. A lot of people speak about LevelDB as like the node of databases. It's just a really simple API um, on top of a, a key value store. It provides uh, a, uh, it's a, it's a sorted key value store. So you can, uh, you can uh, use that to build indexes that you can query. Um, it has just enough features to implement any database engine. Um, LevelDB has said like a really simple um, basic API, get, put, del, batch. Um, batch would, is probably one of the most important things there in that it lets you, uh, it's an atomic batch, so you can emulate transactions and uh, you, can build, uh, you can build more complicated systems. The streams API, everybody loves streams in Node. Um, everything you do in Node, um, it's taken up memory in that process, right? You have to handle, you have to be able to handle back pressure. I have to know that, um, that one person's like flood of events isn't going to take down the server for everybody else. Um, I need to know that people are waiting when they should and where they should in the network. Um, so um, LevelDB Streams API, real simple, create a read stream. Um, this key doesn't actually start from key, it's options. And options uh, accepts a range of keys. So you can say stream me key A to Z, or you know just a subset of that, right? And um, the read stream calls back with both the key and the value, and then every other kind of uh, variation of reading different parts of that. So you can get all the keys out of your database efficiently just by creating a key stream, um, and you can create a write stream um, and just kind of pipe data into your database. It's it's kind of nice. Um, Implementing write stream correctly has been pretty hard. Um, and now it's kind of, uh, it's been forked out into a few different modules. And there's one blessed one that gets bundled with level. Um, but there's been a lot of really interesting work lately by Max Ogden um, trying to tune up how, much, how fast you can import data into level. Um, that stuff's been related to his DAT project. <clears throat> um, so I've had to use MySQL a lot, and, um, and it, it, fits, it fits the transactional, you know, the, the, the general use case pretty well. Um, but if you think about it, MySQL is MySQL as like an interface, as like a wire protocol, and a storage layer, which is whatever you define in the schema of the table, be it like my ISIM by default or uh, in ODB, right? So all of the work that they've done to, in, in ODB, to like write data really efficiently to disk and, and uh, handle transactions, row level locking, all that other fancy stuff, um, is just inside of this MySQL protocol. Like you can only access it this way and you can't really use that for anything else. Um, should be able to do things, uh, amazing things with your database. Um, now, when I talk about um, being able to pick the back end that, that suits your workload, um, the level node module um, basically provides in level down an abstract interface for people to implement um, other key stores besides level DB. So um, there's level down, which implements the regular Google level DB, uh, level hyper, which is hyperdex fork of level DB and level basho, which is um, the basho fork of level DB for React. Um, LMDB is another uh, um, really fast uh, key value store originally for the LDAP project. Um, there's memdown, which is just a simple in-memory only um, disposable value store. We use it for tests a lot. It's great. And then somebody, just for fun, made MySQL down, which will puts the level DB API on top of a MySQL store. Um, and you can just store your key values in there any which way you want, and it's compatible with all of the other level stuff, 
all of the modules and all the things that have been going on in the community. Um, or even in the browser. Um, Level.js sits on top of IndexedDB, which ironically sits on top of a little SQL layer and then sits on top of LevelDB again itself, um, at least in Chrome. So IndexedDB is Levels API implemented on top of, you know, the RFC implemented on top of LevelDB. Um, it's kind of funny. And then uh, the phone gap people made level cap, um, which is on top of lo local storage, um, which is neat because you can browserify all of your level modules. So you can require your node modules in your client side code, and they'll compile um, and just work, um, of course, where um, browser APIs support it. Um, <clears throat> in my demo, I used a couple node modules that I find um, really simple and really, really valuable. Um, level sublevel is just a really thin wrapper around the database object that gives you a namespace, that namespaces all of your keys as you write them into the database. So um, if I, I instantiate a new level DB database object, I wrap it with a sublevel, and then any time I need a new namespace, I can just retrieve an object that that looks and acts exactly like the original database object, except for it transparently namespaces all of my keys. It's kind of cool. And then level live stream. Um, level down and, and level um, expose some hooks, so ways to get some events in an efficient manner so that people can implement things like triggers, um, replication, and, uh, well, live streaming. Uh, level DB key space again. Keys would be sorted like this. Key A has a value. It would be sorted AZ next. It's, it's a lexical sort. Um, and then uh, sublevel. Um, as I said, I wrap the level up object with the sublevel. I get a sublevel that prefixes all of my keys with stuff. And then I put a key directly into the database which is a, this handle, not namespaced. And then I put a key into the subsection. So that generates keys in your level store that look exactly like this, um, given that key was not a variable, it was a string key, and key two was a string key two. That is what gets inserted in the key. That's actually ASCII 255. So that's a perfect uh, delimiter for you to use. Um, between, uh, between chunks so that you can parse your keys into some, into some uh, structure, right? So I can always split on ASCII 255. I know that I'm never going to collide with a different range. So sublevel will put these wides with umlauts in your, in your keys for you um, so that um, you, can, uh, you can rock on and, and have your keys namespaced. Um, so yeah, that's what goes in the database. So if you were just to, in another, you know, just to read all of the keys in your level database, you'd see a bunch of these. It's nice to know where they're coming from. Um, and level live stream. Um, really simple. Again, you just, you just pass it the database object, and then it emits data. Um, as I said, when you combine sublevel with live stream, it's easy to create a live stream of just some section of your database. Um, that's kind of nice, and I use that to, uh, to do some of this stuff. Um, so this is basically an extension of the streams um, talk, um, last JSLA, in that I'm, I have a stream, I'm piping my mouse stream to this stream. The only other difference is that um, I've, I've let Drew join me, and the data is actually going to the level DB on this box, updating my current position, and then updating the DOM. So it's going to the server and back up every time I'm moving the mouse. And I'm not throttling events, though I drop mouse events if, um, if I'm paused. So I handle back pressure transparently and fight with Drew. Um, my, well, we can try and, try and break it later. I'll let people onto my phone. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, do, do, do. Back. So, um, 
This is how I chose to store the data in my, uh, in, for this specific part. Um, every user has one key. That key is updated with data from the object. Um, I didn't make uh, any extra effort to make, the, um, to make the data packet itself very efficient. Like I send back the user's ID and the color of their box and their coordinates every mouse event. So there's some clear, easy optimizations, but as you've seen for this case, it wasn't really needed. So you see it's inserted into a sub-level users. This wise within lots. And a ID for the user. I let the client decide what their ID is. Um, I just hope that people don't sign on in the same millisecond. It's OK. Um, so cool. Um, I'm using level live stream, which sits on top of the user sub-level, and that broadcasts any changes. So what that means is that if I have like five users connected, um, when I receive a new socket for the sixth user, um, I get an, uh, and they connect to the live stream, I first send them all of the keys in that user's namespace, which is basically everybody who's active. I delete anybody who becomes disconnected. Um, and then I keep sending the changes. And the rendering layer just accepts you know, updates to positions um, and renders all the blocks. So. That's cool. And then let's see if we can replay it. Whoa. So I'm also persisting all the data. Um, oh, let's see. This is what a level DB looks like inside. These are the string sort tables, anyway. Let's record some new actions and see what happens. There we go. <laughs> um, we can keep having fun. Uh, Drew, let's see if you break it if you come on again. I think I messed up something with the ID. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. It was something about a... Uh, they're completely random colors. I don't know why it always picks pink for Drew and I. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Hey. So yeah. Anyway, so um, I'm I'm streaming all the data. I'm I'm keeping just a really small list of all my active users so that my live stream only has to flush the current state um, to each connecting client, and then um, it continues updating, and I just pipe that. So I can just show you some of that code real quick, um, but. Um, my log keys, they go into this log sublevel. Um, they have a time so that every event is sorted uh, correctly. I pad the time to 20 characters just to make sure that, um, that I have a unique, that I have room to, to put a sortable unique timestamp into the data. Um, and then the ID of the user or the, the block and then the event. So. Um, and whenever a user disconnects, I log a false for their value, so I know to delete them from the view. So it's just a bunch of these entries um, every time they do something, every time I get a mouse event to the server. So. Let's see here. So this is the client code. Um, this is the portion that does the first page, and this is the portion that does the replay. Um, I have a mouse stream. I give it an ID and a color. Um, I pipe that to something that serializes it as JSON. And then I pipe that to my mouse handler on the server. Just goes over that WebSocket. Um, and then um, I take the, all of the mice and I pipe them to a JSON parse, and then I pipe them to my renderer. So, um, I guess the cool thing is, um, let's 
see. Not really so cool. Anyway, I just uh, make a through stream. And anytime I get an event, I either create a block, just the regular container.append child, and, uh, and I uh, position the blocks um, here as well. Let's see. And uh, yeah. Any, any questions? <laughs> we'll go back to, to playing with the mice. If anybody wants onto my phone, it's Black Sheep Wall, Rebellious Blue Jay. Huh? It's available on GitHub. It's, it's also published as a node module. So if you just npm install, so there, dash JSLA, dash level talk. Um, it, it adds that, that bin to your path. You can just paste that right back into the terminal. It'll start the HTTP server, and you can visit localhost 9999, and you can uh, play with that. You can just start hacking right on top of that, of that code that I already wrote. Um, and uh, of course, the, the, there's the GitHub as well. I didn't put the repository in the package, Jason. That's no good. Um, yeah, so bubble's kind of fast. Um, I've been uh, I've been really happy with it. Um, oh, I should start the server. Are you the output into a Hmm? Oh. oh, no. I'm definitely not. I'm uh, I I'm also capturing the screen. But uh, I can put the console log in there if you want me to prove they're really sending that many data events. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, is there anything else? Yeah, so what about things like adaptability? Are there modules that do replication or like starting multiple replicas? Um, I have a module that I've been working on for sharding. Um, hopefully, the name level shard is still there when I publish it. Um, it'll be very soon. Um, I'm using some of my modules. Uh, I have a merge sort stream. Basically, it acts as a simple router on top of a collection of multi-levels, which is um, level DB exposed over, over just a stream. Um, so you can do HTTP or TCP. Um, and um, it should handle adding and removing new nodes using the same patterns that level DB does for its compaction. So you can imagine um, you need to add a new node. I, uh, I set a flag that says that I haven't compacted yet. I read new keys off of the, off of both the new and all the old ones um, until I manage to resort all of the, redistribute all of the keys into all of the nodes as they should be. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, give you a heads up on that one. Um, and then uh, there's a, um, for replication, there's a level replicate, which is a master to master solution by Dominic Tarr. I know some fellows, uh, Julian Gruber, has been like really kind of digging into that, trying to make sure that every replication module has like expected output, expected replication patterns. Um, but um, they work. Um, I've used level replicate. Um, I've implemented some custom stuff on top of just level trigger, which gives you reliable triggers, um, piping that over a uh, reconnecting multi-level. I have a package that'll like resume the stream if you're disconnected in the middle. Things like that. Anything else? Well, uh, All right. thank you very much.